Without a doubt, Psalms can definitely assist with building muscle to a greater extent than say creatine, BCAAs and protein powder. So in today's video, what I want to do is explore a new Psalm that you've probably never even heard of called OPK double eight double zero four now in today's video what i really want to do is highlight that this is purely for informational purposes only and so what i want to do is actually outline and highlight how opk double eight double zero four might be a potential psalm that has some remarkable benefits without many of the downsides like what we see with many anabolic agents so before we get into the video let's explore what are psalms now psalms are selective androgen receptor modulators. So they're a class of compounds that selectively target androgen receptors in the body, promoting muscle growth and fat loss while minimizing side effects commonly associated with anabolic steroids. Now, by binding to androgen receptors in skeletal muscle and bone, SARMs actually stimulate anabolic activity without significantly affecting other tissues like the liver or prostate. Originally developed for their medical applications such as treating muscle wasting and osteoporosis, SARMs have gained popularity in the fitness industry for enhancing performance and physique. However, they are not FDA approved for recreational use and do carry health risks. So before we get lots of people leaving comments down below about the dangers of SARMs, of course, I understand that many different SARMs on the market currently do possess a wide range of side effects such as liver damage. Some of them have, uh, they can cause changes in your vision. Some of them can lower SHBG. Some of them can decrease sex drive. Some of them can affect mood. They can affect sleep and things of that nature. So just be aware that we need to look at Psalms as a category of supplements or drugs that whilst they do confer many benefits for building muscle and dropping body fat, they do actually carry some risks. So why are Psalms becoming so popular? Bodybuilders are turning to Psalms for their ability to promote muscle growth, enhance strength, and accelerate fat loss. By selectively targeting androgen receptors in muscle and bone tissue, Psalms may help preserve lean muscle during cutting phases and may support faster recovery, allowing for more intense training sessions. Unlike steroids, Psalms are typically available in oral form making them easier and less invasive to use. However, this comes with certain risks, particularly for liver toxicity. Additionally, their status in a legal gray area makes them more accessible, though they remain banned in competitive sports and carry potential health risks. Another reason why SARMs have increased in popularity, particularly for female bodybuilders, is that SARMs are designed to selectively target androgen receptors in muscle and bone tissue, while minimizing activation in other tissues that can lead to virilization. Virilization characterized by unwanted side effects like deepening of the voice, facial hair growth, and clitoral enlargement occurs when androgenic compounds stimulate receptors in tissues sensitive to male hormones. Sarum's selective action reduces the likelihood of these androgenic side effects, making them a potentially safer option for women seeking muscle growth, improved bone density, or physical performance enhancement. However, while sarams may carry a lower risk of virilization, they are not without potential health risks and their long-term safety in women remains unproven. Now, what are the risks of using sarms? I sort of mentioned before about some of the dangers. Let's go into detail around some of the major risks associated with sarms usage. Despite their appeal, sarms come with significant downsides and risks. A recent systematic analysis of products marketed as sarms revealed widespread misbranding. Among 44 products analyzed, only about half contained an actual SARMs, while 10% contained none at all. Alarmingly, 40% were tainted with unlisted ingredients, such as growth hormone secretagogues or compounds previously abandoned due to safety concerns. SARMs are also associated with hepatotoxicity, particularly at higher doses, which limits robust dose response studies. For example, a recent clinical trial in older men with low testosterone and benign prostatic hyperplasia was terminated after participants experienced elevated liver enzyme levels. This risk of liver toxicity not only raises safety concerns, but also hinders exploration of SARMs full anabolic potential. Combined with risks like hormone suppression, cardiovascular strain, and regulatory issues, SARMs can present a significant health hazard if abused. So now let's get into this remarkable SARM called OPK88004. 
So OPK0804, which I'll call OPK from now on, is a non-steroidal indole derivative, which acts as a SARM. Now it has been investigated by OPKO Health for the treatment of erectile dysfunction and symptoms associated with benign prostate hyperplasia. Now that's interesting because most SARMs, when they're released to market, they're not actually designed to treat erectile dysfunction. Whereas this one was you know, associated with trying to treat erectile dysfunction and also symptoms of BPH. Now it is classified as an investigational new drug in the United States, which means that OPKO Health has permission to start human clinical trials and to ship an experimental drug across state lines, usually to clinical investigators before a marketing application for the drug has been approved. Now, some studies on indicate that OPK has the ability to serve as an antagonist to androgen receptors in the prostate, resulting in decreased prostate-specific antigen, which is a, a marker of cancer growth in the prostate, and as an agonist, resulting in increased anabolic effects such as increased lean body mass and function and decreased fat mass. So what does the research suggest about this particular SARM? There have now been three studies of OPK for humans, which is very exciting. The first and most well-known study was conducted in 2019 by Pensina and colleagues. This study was the first randomized trial to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the androgen OPK in prostate cancer survivors with testosterone deficiency. A total of 114 men aged 67.5 on average who had undergone radical prostatectomy for localized prostate cancer and had undetectable PSA levels for at least two years, were randomized to receive placebo or OPK at doses of 1, 5, or 15 milligrams daily for 12 weeks. Safety was assessed through PSA monitoring, liver enzyme tests, complete blood counts, and adverse event reporting with no cases of PSA recurrence, erythrocytosis, or severe drug-related side effects. Laboratory tests revealed small but statistically significant increases in hematocrit and hemoglobin levels in the 5-MG group compared to placebo, though no participants developed erythrocytosis. Dose-related suppression of high-density lipoprotein, cholesterol was observed, but total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and triglycerides remained unchanged. Fasting glucose levels decreased significantly, particularly in the 5-MG group, though insulin sensitivity measures were unaffected. OPK treatment led to dose-dependent increases in lean body mass and decreases in fat mass as measured by DXA scans along with reductions uh, in serum alkaline phosphatase. However, it did not improve sexual function, physical performance, mood or fatigue assessed using validated psychosexual and physical performance tools. These findings suggest that while OPK 88004 improves body composition and some metabolic parameters, it has limited impact on broader health outcomes in this population. Moving on to the next study on this particular SARM, let's have a look at it in detail. The second study of interest is a sub-study of the OPK trial that I just talked about. However, this study specifically explored the effects of the selective androgen receptor modulator OPK on cholesterol efflux capacity, HDL particle characteristics, and a polypoprotein profiles in prostate cancer survivors treated for 12 weeks. Cholesterol efflux capacity measures the ability of HDL particles, often referred to as good cholesterol, to remove cholesterol from cells and transport it to the liver for excretion. This process is essential for reducing cholesterol buildup in tissues and is a key indicator of HDL functionality beyond merely measuring HDL levels. The study found that while OPK significantly suppressed HDLC levels, the cholesterol carried by HDL particles, it did not significantly change HDL particle size or substantially impact CEC when normalized to HDL concentration. SARM treatment caused a dose-dependent suppression of APOA1, the main protein component of HDL, including reductions in HDL subspecies linked to both increased and decreased coronary heart disease risk. Additionally, hepatic triglyceride lipase activity increased which may partly explain the reductions in HDLC levels. However, the treatment had no significant impact on LDL, total cholesterol, or triglyceride levels. These findings challenge the simplistic notion that lower HDLC necessarily increases cardiovascular risk as the functional capacity of HDL particles remains stable. 
LDL, in contrast, is associated with delivering cholesterol to tissues, potentially leading to plaque buildup in arteries, whereas HDL supports the removal of this cholesterol. While the study demonstrated that OPK88004 affects HDL structure and function in nuanced ways, randomized trials are needed to assess its long-term effects on cardiovascular health and events. And thirdly, let's look at this last study outlining the research on OPK88004. The final study is actually a terminated clinical trial conducted by OPK starting in 2017. The phase two study evaluated the safety and effectiveness of two doses of OPK, 15 milligrams and 25 milligrams, compared to a placebo in men with benign prostatic hyperplasia. The primary objective was to assess the impact of OPK on serum prostate-specific antigen levels, while secondary outcomes included body composition analysis, lean body mass, and fat mass, via DXA scans, as well as uroflometry, post-void residual volume, and symptom assessments using the IPSS. A total of 115 men with BPH were enrolled across 15 US sites and were randomized into three groups, placebo, 15 milligrams OPK, or 25 milligrams OPK. Participants underwent a 24-week study consisting of a 16-week treatment period and a four-week follow-up phase. Inclusion criteria required participants to be aged 45 or older presenting with BPH symptoms and meeting specific PSA and prostate volume thresholds, exclusion criteria ruled out those with conditions like recent prostate surgery, significant cardiovascular issues, and prior use of certain medications or treatments. Interestingly, comma, many of the participants in the groups taking OPK did withdraw. So how did it affect PSA levels? As the study was terminated, the researchers did not publish significance tests for the results. So we cannot tell if OPK significantly influenced lean body mass or PSA, however they did publish, means and standard deviations. This table indicates that PSA may have been influenced by OPK as the group taking 25 milligrams daily did show lower PSA levels compared to baseline. PSA is a protein produced by the prostate. Higher PSA levels can indicate prostate issues, including BPH or prostate cancer. Lower PSA levels are generally a sign of better prostate health, suggesting effective treatment or a lack of progression in conditions like BPH or prostate cancer. In studies, a decrease in PSA after treatment indicates positive effects on prostate health. Moving on to body composition. So what effects did this particular psalm have on body composition? Similarly, while we cannot tell if OPK had a significant impact on body composition, it can be seen that the groups who took OPK increased their muscle mass and decreased their fat mass over the 16 weeks. What about participant withdrawal? Interestingly, in a press release that explained that this study was being stopped as the measure for prostate size was unreliable, it was also noted that there were transient increases in liver enzymes for some patients in the higher dose OPK group that completed the trial and returned to normal once the drug was withdrawn. From looking at the clinical trial webpage, it is interesting to note that many participants were withdrawn from the study. Now, moving on, it's important to highlight and illustrate the adverse events or adverse effects that were reported. Additionally, while there is no author interpretation of these results, it does seem like the groups taking OPK had a higher rate of non-serious adverse events, such as blood testosterone levels decreasing, which happened for seven out of 40 and five out of 38 of the men taking 15 milligrams and 25 milligrams respectively. Some men also had increases in AST and ALT, which indicate liver damage. Additionally, for some men, PSA actually increased in the experimental groups. This shows the importance of assessing health markers while using new drugs. Unfortunately, the authors didn't post about how they defined these adverse events, so it is unclear if the change in these markers was very large or not. Either way, it would be great if the authors published these results in a journal, especially since adverse events in clinical trials are sometimes not due to the drugs themselves, but rather external life events. What about as it pertains to sourcing this particular psalm? Where can we get our hands on this particular molecule? So currently this psalm is not available for purchase for consumers. I assume this is because OPKO Health are still running further tests. I'm really excited to see if this particular psalm does release. OPKO in their press release announces their end of their trial noted that because of OPK's significant increase in muscle mass and strength, 
And because OPKO strong interest in the therapy of chronic kidney disease patients, another phase two trial is planned to treat kidney dialysis patients who have low testosterone levels and commonly suffer from muscle weakness and general frailty. This was back in 2019, and there seems to be no indication of this trial as of yet. So we'll have to wait and see. So the final takeaways here is that OPK88004 does present an exciting development in SARM research. However, more studies are needed to particularly analyze and observe the adverse effects such as liver injury and also hormonal suppression. So whether or not it actually is suppressive on our natural testosterone production. That's it for me today, guys. Please leave a comment down below. Let's get the discussions going. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.